Good morning, Apala. Good morning. Ooh, you needed more coffee. <laughs> Good morning, Apala. Good morning. There we go. First, let me thank Luisa for a very kind introduction. And yes, we've been together for many years. But let me tell you, I am always so grateful for her leadership, not just in SEIU, but I think also for our labor movement. I'm also very proud to be here with my fellow jailbird, Larry Cohen of the Communication Workers of America. You know, we just got out of jail because we were conducting civil disobedience on the streets of Washington, D.C. to make sure that the Republicans understand that our time is now and we are going to win immigration reform. I'm also proud to be here with Ken Wong, one of my personal heroes. When I first came to California and I met Kent, you know, he took us in and he taught us the ropes and he taught us to persevere, to fight, and to win. So, Kent, thank you so very much for your leadership. I also know that you heard from Sylvia uh, Taimi Aho, who yesterday, and she's one of our most powerful members in Washington State. We thank her for her leadership and for contributions to our union. Let me also thank your president, Johanna Hester, and your executive director, Greg Sadania, for their leadership of APALA, for being our partners in fighting for social justice, in fighting for workers' rights, and for inviting me to be with you today. And I think for me, it was a great opportunity to come and share with you where we are at this moment in history. And I believe, brothers and sisters, that we are at one of those moments that we have an opportunity to change the course of history in this country by winning immigration reform. Reform that will make it possible for 11 million people to finally come out of the shadows and into the bright sunshine of our society. Reform that will allow millions of young people to reach for the stars and to fulfill their dreams reform that will renew and strengthen our values as a nation of immigrants. Brothers and sisters, I think it's absolutely incredible what we've accomplished thus far. You know, when I think about it, I get goose pimples. We are about to completely change the lives of 11 million people and their families. Change their lives so they can live free. Free from fear that when they leave home, they may not come back that evening because they get arrested and deported, leaving their families alone. They will live free from exploitation, free to pursue their dreams. You know, freedom, it's such a powerful and empowering word and concept. And we are close, very close. But we also know that this fight has not been easy. We've had to fight off attacks from the right wing, the Proposition 187s, the SB 1070s, the HB 56, the deportation, the calls by presidential candidates for self-deportation, and the racist and xenophobic appeals to the worst instincts 
in the American people. And as Luisa said, yeah, we've been knocked down. Yeah, we've suffered defeats. But you know what? We always got back up. We dusted ourselves off and we got back in the fight. And because we never gave up and we never gave in, we are this close. You know, we are so close, I can taste it. I can feel it. And I am convinced that it's not a matter of whether we're going to have immigration reform. It's a matter of when. So brothers and sisters, if we continue fighting, it will be sooner rather than later because we are not going to take no for an answer. So I have a very simple message that Luisa and two to 3,000 of our closest friends delivered to Representative McCarthy. We said, listen up, wise up, save yourself a lot of pain and suffering and do comprehensive immigration reform now. Because if you don't, if you don't, we're going to stay on your ass until you do. But you know, let us remember why we are at this moment. We spent a lot of time fighting. You know all of the marches, all of the voter registration drives, all of the sit-ins, civil disobedience, arrests, citizenship campaigns, voter registration, get out the vote activities, phone calls, legislative visits, you name it, we've done it. And we've done it by the millions. But you know, we are gonna win. We are gonna win. But here is one, my, one, one of my fears, perhaps my greatest fear, is that our community becomes overconfident. And they say, ah, we've won already. Immigration reform is going to happen. And one thing I've learned in all of my organizing uh, years is that when you relax, you lose. When you're making progress, it's the time to push even harder, not the time to relax. So we need to make sure that everyone understands that this is ours to lose if we relax and don't continue fighting. But when we win, brothers and sisters, then what? Is it Corona time? <laughs> Let's go to Vegas and spend the weekends uh, relaxing, fights over? Well, let me tell you, and this is one of the things I wanted to share with you. It will be wonderful to win immigration reform. It will be great. But that cannot and should not be the end of the story. Because while getting papers will make life better for undocumented immigrants, it will not guarantee them or us a better life. Because I know, I know that in this country there are millions of US citizens living in poverty working at low wages, with their rights not being respected, with no benefits, and their kids are not getting the education they need to be the leaders of tomorrow. And brothers and sisters, a good job, a good education for our kids, a job with benefits, health care, that is the American dream. And that's why immigrants came to this country. We came to find and build a better future for our families. So yes, we're gonna get there, but only if we stay organized, united, and continue fighting. And if we do, we will reach what Martin Luther King Jr. called the promised land, because that is the promised land. Brothers and sisters, in this country, 
and probably around the world. You don't all get, always get what you deserve, what is the right thing. If I may paraphrase Frederick Douglass, you get what you are strong enough to win and determined enough to hold. And we know, and we know that we are strong, that we are powerful, if we choose to use that power for change. And if you look the API community and the Latino community, we are 65 million strong in this country. 65 million strong. We are 21% of the U.S. population, and by the year 2050, we are going to be over 100 million strong. And you know, that power grows each and every minute of every day. But brothers and sisters, God helps those who help themselves. And we need to help ourselves and help our families win the American dream. You know, we've mobilized like never before. And let me tell you, you scare the ever-living bejesus out of the Republican Party in 2012. You outperformed every other group in terms of turning out to vote and expressing your opinions. You carried not only President Obama, but a whole lot of candidates across the finish line. But that is not the end, that is the beginning. You are well positioned for the future. You have the passion and the commitment for social justice. You know, you have a lot of established leaders, Kent Wong, Luisa Blue, Mike Honda, Macy Hirono, but you also have a cadre of emerging leaders like Courtney Pugh, Greg Sandania, Aijin Poo, Johanna Hester, and thousands and thousands more, dreamers and others that are coming and picking up the baton from us old people and moving the ball forward for our community. That's seasoned people. Seasoned, not old. <laughs> Not old, seasoned, experienced. I like where we are. I like where we are. We are the, on the threshold of history. And as long as we continue fighting together, we are going to win together. Because, you know, history is on our side. Righteousness is our banner. And our passion and commitment is the engine that will drive us forward. Thank you so much for having me with you today. As Cesar Chavez said, si se puede. Pete Velasco. Pete Velasco. And Philip Veracruz. Pete Velasco and Philip Veracruz always told me, Mabuhai! Brothers and sisters, we can do it. Let's do it. Thank you so much.